Am I the asshole for making my husband fly coach while I flew first class? I'm going to... My initial judgment, and I'm glad that this is not how the legal system works, is that you can't be an asshole in this situation because it's very funny. If we were flying somewhere and Kate was like, I want to fly first class, there's a genuine chance that I might be like, you know what? To save like 1500 bucks, you fly first class, I'll be hanging up. I'll be hanging out and coach. Doesn't bother me. We're watching the same movies. You're, you're, you're renting a nicer chair. I've flown first class two times. It was on the same trip. They were short flights. It was nice to get unlimited wine and, and snacks and a light meal. But I was like, this isn't worth $1,000. Are you crazy? I'm watching X-Men Apocalypse on a, on a 3.2 inch screen. It's not that big of a deal. You enjoy the first class. I'm just, and with no resentment, you enjoy the first class. I'll be in coach. I'll be wedged in the middle seat for six hours. I'll be watching some six out of 10 Jason Siegel movie. And we'll arrive at the same location $1,500 richer. Yeah, plus we can still text. We, we could play chess over the in-flight entertainment system. Anyway, sorry. This really, really bothered me. I understood a first-class ticket for me would strain our budget a bit, but what kind of a man lives it up? Lives it up in first class! Well, his wife sits in coach. I asked him just that, and he responded, Come on, I'm taking you along with my work trip. I earned my first-class seat by working hard. It's my reward, but I insisted if we truly couldn't afford a first-class seat for me that he as a gentleman should give up his seat for me. We argued, but ultimately he agreed to give me his seat. Of course he did. Clearly he's, a, he's an educated guy. He's a good earner. He's not an idiot. Of course he lost that argument. We had a good time in Miami, but he's been a little mad at me since, saying that I earned his first class seat, that it was free and cost us nothing, unlike my plane ticket, and that I should have just let him enjoy what he'd earned instead of guilting him out of it. I think he's being a baby. He should have put his wife's comfort above his own, especially since he made the choice to be cheap. We're very close to his parents, so we've taken the argument to them for me mediation, but they are split. His father agrees with me that he wasn't being a gentleman. Well, his mother thinks he earned his first class seat and that I should have let him have it. I'll ask all of you, am I the asshole? Bro, who fucking cares? It was like a two hour flight in a comfier chair. You guys got problems. Get over it. This is not that big of a deal. Dude, honestly, dude, I, she is my King Solomon instinct is that obviously on a principle level, she's wrong. He earned the first class ticket by working. The, the ticket was given to him. If she wants to come along and they can't afford a second first class ticket, she should fly coach because he earned the free ticket. Okay? On, as, a, as a human being who, you know, is in a relationship, who's married, this husband has got to get his head out of his ass. You should be sitting in coach and you're like, holy cow. I get like, especially if they had kids, this, this would never come up because he would be like, holy shit, three hours to myself? No, I want to sit in first class. No, please. No, okay, fine. You take. I guess I'll be the bigger man. You take it. I'll be back there. Can I have some more pretzels and hummus, please? Can I be? Uh, can I watch two in-flight movies at the same time? Can I take a little bit of a nap? I would be. I would be pogging. I'd be living the life. I don't care if I'm in. I'd be making friends in the middle seat. It just doesn't seem like this is that big of a deal. And maybe, maybe you could. I mean, there's so many obvious situations here that could, or solutions. Maybe she takes first class on the way down. You take first class on the way back. That's like a literal King Solomon. You're completely fair. Or maybe you just fucking nut up and take the coach seat, even though you're in the wrong, because it's the easiest way to solve the problem. And then you get back at her by ordering more in-flight beverages judgment-free. And then when you get off, she'll be like, how many Heinekens did you have? And you just fucking lie. You just be like two. She could be like seven. Who knows? I don't know how long the flight is. This is a secret <laughs> to a happy life. <laughs> I'm just there's so many different ways that you could get through this without it. Now you've dragged in the older generation to have their say. This is not going to end well. This is not like a real problem. And I'm like, I'm mad at the husband because there's so many different ways you could play this. You, he, like, if he was, like, this is how you know he's never seen Game of Thrones. Because if, if he knew who Littlefinger was, he would have he said, so 
I offered to take the coach seat, knowing that if they ever got into a dispute over it anyway, she's going to win the argument and he's going to end up taking the coach seat. He should have offered it to begin with. This gives him some soft power that he's used to improve perception around him, which allows him to then exert his will in a, in a different context. Maybe he gets to choose some restaurants you know, as a result of that. And not even like in a, a contractual swap, but just because you've created an environment where, you know, he's more respected as a result because he made a concession willfully instead of having to fight for it. Even though he's in the right. I also, I don't know if I can leave, if, if I can read the comments on this one because I think that I'm going to lose my mind. Because I know I, people are going to get lost in the damn weeds. People are going to be like, well, he earned it, so technically he should be sitting up there. That's true, but at the same time, the fucking husband should be like, you know what, you're right, enjoy yours. You're, you're, giving your wife a first-class ticket is a, it's going to have knock-on effects that are going to make your life better as well. And the knock-on effects are probably going to be better for you than sitting in a more comfortable chair and drinking like three bottomless mimosas or something like that. I know that the principle is she's wrong on principle. But something, have you never read Diplomacy by Henry Kissinger? Have you never, listen, dragging out a whiteboard. This is Niccolo Machiavelli. Niccolo Machiavelli wrote a novel in the 15th century called The Prince. It's with the prince, so you said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And then you gotta, you, you don't understand, okay? Simple, she is selfish, entitled, manipulative, greedy, a me, me, me person. This, this post is like 500 words, man. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. If y'are, she spelled the things the wrong, fucking your dude. It's got 20,000 upvotes. User received gold and deleted their post for this. Um, uh, if, if you're going to be financially strapped by buying a first class ticket, then the reality is you cannot afford it and are trying to live above your means. Okay, so what? I mean, I, 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 I don't know what the point, like what does it have to do with, who cares? Who asked? Well, you, in order to rule on this, you need to know their exact monthly budget. I hate it. Then just, you see, here's the thing. For some reason, we've been raised in this culture to believe that saving money is, is a moral good and spending money is a moral evil as if there's some kind of ethical concern. And then we got it on it. Get me out of here. Next post. You're the asshole. What kind of wife puts her comfort above that of her husband's? This is not a husband-wife thing. I think a lot of people put their own comfort above the comfort of almost anybody else. A child? <laughs> Different. A child? Sure, your own kid. I think a lot of people put their, their own comfort above the comfort of someone else. This whiteboard bit is fire. Okay, let's go. You're a hypocrite and you cheated him out of something he earned and deserved for it. Do, have you, uh, do you realize that we got the fucking... There's like 10 people in the United States of America that, uh, that, are, that are holding everybody else down. You see they got us fighting over the damn scraps. A first class flight... For three hours, everybody's in here like you cost them a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You see that we're, we're all out here in the rabble, punching each other in the face for just, uh, just things they're casting off from the high table. Sitting in a slightly more comfortable chair in the sky while they feed you like a meal of sous-vide salmon or something like that. Because you know they're not sautéing that shit. You got, there's, no, there's no open heat on the airplane. Shit is all microwaved in like an aluminum bag back at the terminal. They got you turning on each other when you should be turning on the people that make the first class tickets so expensive in the first place. Offer a hand, they'll take an arm. Why are you bringing like the Acts of Apostles into this? What are you talking about? You're not, you're the asshole. Not so much for this seat situation, more for your whole outlook on this venture. This was his moment, his trip. He wanted to share that with you, but it seems like that in and of itself wasn't good enough for you. He offered to take you to the Real Estate Notary Public Convention 2022 in Saras Sarasota Springs. His moment. And you took your pants off, and took a shit on his mom. Look, she's in the wrong. I, I just need to keep coming back to that because on a principle, like a, a pseudo-legal level, is if I was an independent arbiter, 
the first thing I would say is, are you sure you want to do this shit over this? Then the second thing is, I would say he gets the seat because it's his comp ticket from his work. But then I would, we, I'm zipping up in the bathroom urinal, and then he comes in. I would be like, brother, just one more time. Are you sure you want to be here? Is it really worth it? And then it's his, it's his choice from that point onwards. But if, if he doesn't respond to the men's room arbitration, then, then I've got to issue a legally binding decision. But still, if you're sticking to outdated gender norms of a gentleman who gives up a seat for his lady, then do you also fetch him his slippers and a stiff drink when, you get home wearing your, when he gets home wearing your best lipstick? Why is he... Am I losing the ability to read? Am I losing comprehension? Where does he work? He's wearing his wife's lipstick? What's going on here? I'm confused. <laughs> so I would promptly apologize for acting spoilt if I was in your position. And perhaps you could give up something you love for his benefit sometime. And you think I'm the King Solomon here. Now she's got to... You, if you want to make this whole... Put your Blu-ray of Sex in the City Season 2 in the paper shredder. Oh, you don't love me? No, that was the season they introduced uh, Mr. Big. Getting her to get the better half of something is frustratingly difficult sometimes. Okay, keep bragging. You sound like Patton Oswalt. Hey, that reminds me of a joke. My wife is so hot. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'd love for the update to say something like my husband met his true love and coach who's not a greedy jerk and now I'm divorced. Sanest Redditor of all time. I wonder if they, if they actually made that post. Am I the asshole for leaving my wife for someone I met on a two-hour flight to Miami? I think people would be like, you're the asshole. She chose to build her life around you, and then you just go and throw it away for a cheap fling? Oh, but she made me sit and coach. Oh, delete the gym, uh, tan the Facebook, and uh, do your laundry.